Good morning, everybody. How we doing? Oh, man. Why do I even ask? <laughs> How we doing? There we go. My goodness. It is a nice long weekend and very chilly outside, and it's just going to be a great day. Um, so I hope you all came ready to worship, but right before we get started here, I just kind of want to share something. Um, you guys will all know this. It's Matthew 6. Um, I just want to focus on this. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you'll eat or drink, or about your body or what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet the Heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? And why do you worry about your clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow? They do not labor or spin, yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all of his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you? You have little faith, so do not worry, saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink or what shall we wear? But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and these things will be given to you as well. And I just wanted to kind of have that set in our minds this morning as we get ready to start to worship. Um, I think a lot of times we come in here and we bring, you know, and we, and we should. We bring everything in here with us, and it's not that we, we don't want you to leave it. But also, as we come before the Lord to worship this morning, I just want to invite you guys to just kind of free your mind of whatever it is that you're, you're going through. And just remember that He is Jehovah Jireh. He is enough. He is your provider. And so today, instead of sitting here and, and soaking in worry, we can worship Him freely. So I just invite you guys all to stand up because we're going to have some fun worshiping this morning. Jesus. 
We're just going to have a moment here as I change these. But I don't want the moment to stop just because I'm, I stopped singing. You guys are worshiping. This is not about me. It's not a performance. This is about you worshiping your creator. So just because I'm stopping singing, you guys lift up your praise to him because this is to him and to him alone. Sing it out.
when the world is screaming in our ears that we need more and more and more and more and more and more and more God remind us that you alone are sufficient we will thirst forever unless we get a drink of that living water we'll be hungry forever unless we have a taste of that bread of life you're the only thing that can satisfy Lord Jesus and I just thank you so much that we just can have these monuments, this Bible, this, these stories that just remind us of your goodness and that you are sufficient, God. Lord Jesus, help us to press into you this morning. God, we 
love you and we thank you. And it's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. So uh, who needed that this morning? I did. I did. And on the way coming here this morning, it's like the scripture came to me. It says he inhabits the praises of his people. So it's like it's not, it's not this building that creates that. It's each and every one of you that create that presence here. So I want to welcome you this morning. I want, hey, can we turn around and welcome those online? Good morning. We thank you for being here this morning. Uh, coffee in the back, it's really good. It's really good. So if you need some coffee, uh, maybe you just need water. Ah, there we go. People getting up. Yeah. Um, so I thought of this. Like, we call this our living room, and in my house, my living room is a high traffic area. Like, it's a place where people talk, the kids play. Like, there's a bouncy ball that is in my living room. It is a place where there is entrance and exit for my dog to go out and my dog to come in. So this living room provides, what we get here provides the entrance for us to take it outside. So in the front of your seats, except for the first row, there is a connection card. We ask that you would fill it out, put it in the offering. There is going to be a serve team family Come now to take the offering. Scott, what are you doing over there? Uh, <laughs> I was going to say, I seen her throw her hands up, so I knew something was going on there. Um, so here they come. Father, we just thank you um, for the ability to give, Lord God. We just thank you for what you have given us, and we give back to you, Lord God. Father, that is a form of worship as well, Lord God, and we just thank you for that responsibility. Uh, and the, the joy that it brings us in giving, in Jesus' name. A couple announcements. Ne Who likes picnics? Okay, okay, we got a couple. Kevin, we got a couple picnic people. Okay, three people, okay. Uh, so, all church picnic next Sunday after second service. Memorial Park. What we need is you to bring a dessert, and a side, okay? Dessert and side. Or if you wanna bring two desserts. Oh, I'm sorry, no, that's deviating. That's deviating from the plan. Uh, so no, a dessert and side. Um, this evening at the band shell, um, yeah, yes, it is at Chambersburg, correct, yes, it is. I was thinking of the word after I said band show, I kind of like, but yes, uh, seven o'clock. Hey, forget that, scratch that. It's not at the band show. It's at the church now. Seven o'clock? Seven o'clock. It, sanctuary, man, sweet. Seven, like. Like, I'm sorry that you guys get to be involved in Kelly, and, but that's what happens in the living room. See? There's communication that takes place. Absolutely. Absolutely. That was pure ad lib, let me tell you. So, uh, but no. Uh, so, 7 o'clock this evening at Chambersburg Church. <laughs> Worship night. Uh, so, Okay. Okay, so <laughs> now with all of that being said, uh, I want to introduce guest speaker this evening. This morning, this evening, this afternoon. See that? We got that, got that all messed up. We're going to flip-flopping back. Uh, oh, uh, but yeah. Uh, there you go. Thank you. Thank you. There you go. <laughs> It's volunteer, remember? <laughs> uh, but now, I want to introduce uh, Logan Carey. Uh, 
I know that you have seen him around. Uh, he likes to hide himself in Kids Point. Hide? <laughs> Is that what you but, call it? But uh, no, we have the honor and the privilege of uh, hearing what God has to speak through him. Uh, I pray that what, it, however God wants you to receive it this morning, whether it is a word of salvation, a word of deliverance, a word of healing, a word of freedom, liberty, however that is, I just ask that God would, uh, that you would receive it, how God brings it forth. Love you, man. Thank you, Rich. All right. How are you guys doing? You guys confused? Because I am. <laughs> no, no, thank you, Rich. Um, so yeah, for, uh, for those of you uh, that don't know me, uh, I am uh, Logan, and that is my beautiful family. Um, that picture, I tried to find a picture that explains all of, our, uh, all of our personalities in a nutshell, and that, I think, is pretty perfect. Um, yeah, so, but those of you who know me, uh, my daughter, my oldest daughter, that's Ainsley, uh, she is going to be seven at the end of June. Um, for those of you who know who know Ainsley, I know Rich can attest to this. Ainsley will sit down and have an adult conversation with you for as long as she wants. Yeah, yep. And then 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 there's then there's Lakin. Um, Lakin is is, a, is she's five. She just turned five at the beginning of this month, and she is, she will melt your heart one moment and then stomp in that puddle the next moment. Um, that's just who she is. She is, yeah, she's the quintessential Sour Patch Kid. Uh, and then, then there's my beautiful wife. She was the one up here uh, strumming the guitar and singing barefoot. Guys, I'm sorry if it stinks in here, but it is her feet. Okay, I'm sorry. And please don't touch anything after she's done with it because your hands will be nice and sweaty. Um, so... But, but I can say, the guys, come on, I can say this because she's meant for me. She's perfect, okay? She, for me, she is probably the only person that can wake up every morning and choose to love me after a night of no sleep because of my snoring. So she, she, is, she is the love of my life. And uh, yeah, I'm just, I'm earning brownie points right now so that I can sleep in the bed, you know, so... Um, but yes, this is my family. They, they give me my purpose. They're the reason that I get up in the morning, go to the job that I work at, sacrifice my time, my effort, so that I can provide for them. I protect them. But then also, on top of all of that, when I come home, they fuel me. I can come home from a day of work, and I'm really tired, and I just want to sleep, because sleep is my new best friend. And Lakin will come up and go, Daddy, play with me. And for those of you who know Lakin, she's got these bright blue eyes, and like I said, she will melt your heart. Um, so, you know, I'm like, okay. But they're, they're, what, they're what give me my purpose in life. Like, I, they drive me. They fuel me. But I have this problem, okay? All right? Is that, is that okay that I, I have a problem? I'm going to share it with you guys. Is that Okay. Yeah, I got a couple of you that are like, yeah, 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 sure, sure. Thanks, Aaron. Uh, we'll just, we'll have a conversation right now, all right? But I have this problem where I'm like, yeah, my, my family, family fuels me, but man, how many of you are familiar with the, the grass is always greener? Yeah, yeah, the grass is always greener, right? Now, the, the title of my talk today is the grass is not always greener. I know, I know Kevin doesn't usually have a title to his message, but he, he, he had on his paper titles. And I'm like, you don't ever use titles, so why? Should... But I'm going to call it the grass is not always greener, okay? So let's talk about that today. So my problem is, like, I look at my family. Yes, they fuel me, but that over there, that, that, could, be, that could make life so much better. I have a conversation. I had a conversation with Amanda, and I'm like, I'm like, you know, I could, I could get a part-time job so we could have a little bit more money. And she's like, do you really want to do that? Like, you, we would never see you, right? But that's kind, of the, that's kind of the mindset we get in sometimes. I'm like, hey, if I could just go after that, I could actually have a peace in my purpose. Does that make sense? 
I can feel like, yeah, I, I'm actually, this is, this is it. This, that's what I need right over there. That thing over there, I need it because life will be so much easier. I don't know where that, that's hitting you guys today. You're probably all thinking like, yeah, okay, I get it. I know where you're going, right? Some of you, maybe, right? So I don't know what that looks like for you guys though. Maybe, maybe you're like me. Maybe your family is what fuels you and you're like, I get up every morning, I go into super parent mode, I yell at one kid, maybe two, they tell me they want cereal for breakfast, I pour their cereal, and then two minutes later they're like, no, I want something else, and you're pouring the cereal back in the box because they want something else, or you're like, no, eat it, and then a puddle melts in the middle of your kitchen, right? And you're like, this is, this is my life, I love this, <laughs> Right? Maybe, maybe it's your job. Maybe it's your career. You're like, man, I'm doing what I'm called to do. I'm striving. This is, this is it. I go, I get up. I'm killing it every day. This is it for me. My job fuels me. I have this purpose. This is it right here. Maybe, maybe it's your physique, right? Maybe you like to go to the gym. I don't like to go to the gym. I like to put food in my stomach, and that's why I look like this. So all of you who say I want to get into shape, guess what? Round is a shape too. Okay? Right? So, <laughs> maybe, maybe it's your hobbies. Maybe your hobbies give you a purpose, and you're like, oh, excuse me. <clears throat> I laughed a little bit too much there. Um, maybe, maybe you like to draw, and you're like, drawing is my purpose. You can get stick figures out of me, and sometimes that's a stretch. Right? Or, you know, or it's cars. Maybe you just, you just love getting your hands dirty, getting into an engine, tearing it apart, putting it back together. I couldn't even change a spark plug in my vehicle, so <laughs> you guys are awesome. Or maybe, maybe, it's a, maybe you're a Chick-fil-A food taster. Yeah? This is your day off, right? Yeah. This, is, this is the Chick-fil-A people's day off, right? So, I'm sorry, I just made you guys hungry for Chick-fil-A. I'm sorry. They are closed today, for those of you who don't know. But, I don't know what, that, what it is for you guys, but you all have that one thing that you're like, yes, this gives me purpose. But then we all have that thought, like, if I could just get that, life would be easier. Life would be better. I would feel more fulfilled. Maybe, maybe with your job, you're like, I'm killing it at this job. I love this job. But there's a job with a pay raise that I don't like, but I'm qualified for it. I could take it. I might not see my family as much. Hours are different. But hey, it's more money. Maybe, maybe you're, I, I struggle with this. We just bought a house back in January, and we were living in a townhome, and it was like, oh, if we could just buy a house, this would be so much better. We did buy the house, but anyway. Yeah, but, we, but, you know, we've been saying that for years before we had bought our house. But there's, there's something that just looks better. There's always something that you're like, I'm called to where I'm at now, or I'm called to this purpose. This is what I'm supposed to be doing. But, but that over there, that grass is greener over there. In the Bible, uh, we are going through this garden series, um, and... So we're talking about these gardens in the Bible. You know, Kevin has talked about the Garden of Eden. And we're gonna actually going to hit a couple of gardens in this sermon. Um, and I think the garden thing is important. I'm, I'm going to kind of dive into that a little bit later. But we're going to be in three different gardens today. So we're going to start at the Garden of Eden. So now we, we, we know that Adam and Eve have been created. Everything in the world has been created. God created everything. And then on the seventh day, he took a rest. That was the day Chick-fil-A was closed. So he decided to rest that day. Just kidding. But God chose to take a rest on that day. And then he gives Adam and Eve a job. He's like, hey, take care of the garden. Name all the animals. Now, how confusing would that be? Whew. When do you think of the word cow? Don't diss cows, though. They're my favorite animals, so I'm allowed to do that because they're my favorite. But, um, but anyway, so they have, the, they have this job. They have a purpose. God says, hey, just be here in this garden. Be with me. Eat whatever you want. That sounds great. Eat whatever you want. Yes, please. Right? 
He's like, you know, they can just walk up and pull fruit off of a tree, but God tells them, yeah, you can do that, but, but for one, right? So we're going to pick it up in Genesis 3, uh, 1 through 6, okay? And I'm going to read through it. It says, now the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord God had made. First of all, I'm going to stop right there. There's a reason the devil chose to be a snake in the Garden of Eden. Snakes are not okay. Snakes are evil. I hate snakes. So we're just gonna, I'm just going to tell you all that right now. Walked through PetSmart the other day. Somebody had a snake wrapped around their neck. I bolted out the door. My, my girls were like, Daddy, come back, see the snake. I'm like, nope, nope, I'm out of here. Right? I don't do snakes. Anyway, sorry. He said to the woman, did God really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, we may eat fruit from the trees in the, in the garden, but God did say you must not eat the fruit from the tree that is in the middle of the garden. You must not touch it or you will die. So Eve knows she's got this purpose. She's in this garden. And she's looking around and she's like, yeah, we got all these trees God said we can eat from. All of them. Look at all this. Look at all he's provided for us. I can just walk up and pull this fruit right off here and take a bite. I can do that whenever I want. But God did say there was the one tree that we're not allowed to touch. At this point, Eve seems like she's, she's okay with that, right? She's like, yeah, God, God said that, but look at all these other trees we have here. Right? We tracking? Good? Okay. And it goes on to say this. It says, you will not certainly die, the serpent said to the woman. For God knows that when you eat from it, your eyes will be open and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. When the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye, and also desirable for gaining wisdom, she took some and ate it. She also gave some to her husband, who was with her, and he ate it. So the devil, he, er, the serpent, he twists it. He says, no, 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 you, you, you won't die. That grass over there is greener. He says, if you eat that, life will be easier. Life will be better. That grass over there is greener. Yeah, all this fruit's good for you, but that fruit over there, that could make you better. And Eve is like, oh, okay. And she says, hey, Adam, hey, Adam, come on. We're going to go try this fruit over here. And Adam's just like, finally, she decided where we're going to eat. Oh, man. Oh, no more fighting. Yes. And he, he's not thinking because he's just happy that Eve chose where they're going to eat. I don't know how this works for you, Tucker. Grace is always hungry. So it's like she must always know where she's going. Hangry. hangry. Oh, okay. Like it's always like Chipotle or, or something like that, right? Whatever you're feeling that day. It's mostly tacos. You usually want tacos. I feel like maybe. Well, Chipotle good. Yeah, Chipotle is good. <laughs> Chipotle is my Chick-fil-A. So that's, right? Um, but, anyway, but he, you know, she, they go and they eat this fruit because they're like, yeah, the grass is greener over there. And then we kind of know what happens. It's, it's the fall of man, right? They, they had everything they needed around them. And they looked at that tree and they're like, that, that could be better for me. And all that peace that they have in this purpose is gone because, because they're, they're kicked out of the garden. Things are hard for them, Right? Things get a lot harder for them. So they, they've lost the peace that comes with their purpose because they were like, yeah, but that looks good. We tracking? Yeah? So we're going to go to Matthew 26 now, another garden. And I just, to me, it's, it, we're going from garden to garden because I, God is calling us to the garden. Right? Life started in a garden. We're in the garden. We're going to go to the Garden of Gethsemane. And then at the end, we're going to go to another garden. I think this is important that these moments are happening in a garden because God's calling us there saying, hey, come be with me. And that's, kind of, that's, what, that's what's happening here with the disciples. Jesus is about to be arrested. Okay? This is where he goes to the garden and he cries. And it says he, he, he cries or sweats t blood. He's this upset. So he takes the disciples, and they're going to this garden, and he grabs Peter, James, and John. He's like, hey, guys, I want you to come with me a little bit further. And he takes them there, and he's like, 
Guys, listen, I'm not okay. This is what he says. We're going to go to Matthew 26, verses 38, 41, if you want to follow along. It says, Then he said to them, My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. So he's given the disciples a task. Their purpose in this moment is to be with Jesus. Okay? He says, Stay here and keep watch with me. Going a little further, he fell to his face fell with his face to the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. Then he returned to the disciples and found them sleeping. Couldn't you men keep watch with me for one hour? He asked Peter. Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. So he's giving them a job. Their purpose right now, pardon me, is to pray. With Jesus, right? And, you know, it's been a long day. The disciples are probably getting tired. They've probably been walking all day. They've been talking all day. So now they're in this garden, and it's a garden, and it's beautiful. And they're like, yeah, that grass over there looks really green. I'm going to go sit down. They sit down, and and they're like, oh, man, I'm super tired. You know, Jesus, if I just take this one second to just just sleep, when I wake back up, I I won't be hangry. I'll, I'll, be, I'll be rested, right? But Jesus, uh, Jesus tells them to stay and keep watch. They're like, yeah, but, but sleep is better for me right now in this moment, at this time, right now. Sleep is better for me, right? Then they're like, then I can probably fulfill this purpose that you've given me, this task that you've given me. Then I'll, uh, then I'll be at peace. I won't be mad, right? But Jesus comes back, and he's like, you guys are sleeping? You can stay awake for an hour? He says, stay and keep watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. He says, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. So he's saying, right now, the spirit's enough. That's what you need right now to fulfill this purpose. He says, this over here, this, no, no, no. No, you, no sleep right now. Right here is enough for you. You can have a peace in this purpose. My, my question is, when I read this, I was like, you know, things happen the way that they happen for a reason. But my thought was, the disciples fell asleep. What did, what did they miss out on? Did God have something for them in that moment? Would they have seen something? Heard something? Felt something? But they, they chose to fall asleep. They were like, that grass over there is greener. Probably quite Literally. They went to lay down in the greener grass, right? So we're going to go to Psalm 23, but before we do that, I don't know where, where, this is, where this is hitting you guys at. We all, we all have this purpose in mind. We're like, yeah, this is, what, this, is, this is what I'm called to. But all at the same time, we're like, yeah, but that... That over there could be better for me. My life would be so much easier if that, right? Like I said at the beginning. But when we look at Psalm 23, I'm just going to do the first verse because Andrea just spoke about Psalms 23 a couple weeks ago. If you guys didn't see that, go back and watch it again. She does, she's awesome. I love Andrea. But I'm just going to read the very first verse because this, is, this blows my mind. Psalms 23.1 says, The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. How many of you would love to say, I lack nothing? Thank you. (laughs) I got one hand. How many of you would love to say, I lack nothing? Okay, so sheep, it says, the Lord is is my shepherd. Sheep, sheep are not smart. There, that's the best phrase I can give you. Sheep are not smart. Sheep without a shepherd have no purpose. They could run around doing whatever they wanted. They could run around. They could fall over, and they can't get back up. Sheep have no purpose without a shepherd. They're not protected. They're not fed. But when they have that shepherd, it says he, li- he makes them lie down in green pastures. He leads them beside steel waters. He protects them. That's you guys. You're his sheep. He is your shepherd. 
And he says, it says right here in verse 23, it says, the Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. Whoa. In him we lack nothing. He is our provider. So when we, we no longer, when we're focused on Jesus, he gives us a peace in our purpose because we're, we're no longer focused on that thing over there. We're, we're not focused. The, the, the phrase, the grass is always greener, has no meaning. We are so transfixed on Jesus that we can have a full and complete purpose over or peace over our purpose because he is our shepherd and we lack nothing. I keep saying that over and over again, but man, that, that hits me so hard. Just imagine for one second if we could look at our lives and say, I lack nothing. I am at peace with the purpose that I am given right now. I lack nothing. In the last chapter of the Bible, in Revelation 22, John, John is seeing heaven, and he's trying to explain it to us. And guess what he explains? A garden. He explains a garden. He explains a river flowing from God and the Lamb. And it says, in, and on either side of this, of this river are the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And he's explaining this just amazing garden, a garden to us. So life started in a garden. Life was changed in a garden. But it was fixed in a garden. Sorry. It was fixed in a garden. And then God's calling us back to a garden. But this, this, this garden at the beginning and this eternal garden at the end, they're different. In this eternal garden that we get to spend eternity in with, with God, there is no sin. There is no shame. Adam and Eve felt shame. There is no shame. How do you think the disciples felt when Jesus yelled at them? And then found out he's going to be arrested. There's none of that. There's no sin. There's no shame. All we do is proclaim Jaira. I love that song, Jaira. We are so transfixed on our shepherd. We're so transfixed on our God that we lack nothing in that moment. All it is is praise and worship for our God. We are so at peace with the purpose that God has given us. And my hope for you guys is today that, you know, if you're looking for your purpose, man, talk to God about it. If you're like, well, I'm, I'm pursuing that thing, that thing that's going to give me purpose, talk to God about it. If you, the Lord is our shepherd. We lack nothing. I hope you guys. You, um, I hope I'm being clear, and I hope that you guys are 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 looking at that thing that gives you purpose. And you guys can look at that thing and say, you know what? The Lord is my shepherd, and I lack nothing. We won't have to worry anymore. We won't have to overthink. That's me. I overthink everything. <laughs> right. The Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing, and we can have a peace in our purpose. Guys, I want to pray over us today. Just thank God for bringing us here. Heavenly Father, I just thank you so much for this opportunity to speak your word to these people, God. God, I don't, I don't know where, where everybody's at, what they're going through, God, but you do. God, you, you have given each and every person in here a purpose, God. And God, I just pray that you would open their eyes to their shepherd, you. And that they, they would lack nothing. God, give them a peace over their purpose today, God, because you are enough. You are more than enough. You are always enough. God, you have given us our purpose and we just thank you for today. God, just...
be with us as the rest of this week goes on. God, give, uh, thank you for bringing winter again in the middle of May. God, I just, I just pray for each and every person in here, God. I'm so thankful that they are here, God. I'm thankful for you, this opportunity to be able to speak your word. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Logan, thank you. Um, there's a couple of things. Uh, peace for your purpose. Maybe God right now is transitioning you to a different garden. It's not always that you've went to that garden and now you found out that it's wrong. Maybe God has given you another purpose or another piece that he wants to lead you to a different garden. Peace for the purpose. Peace for the transition. Clarity. If that is you today, no matter where you're at in the transition uh, or what garden you're in, we'd love to connect with you at the Hub. We'd love to walk that out with you. Uh, we'd love to encourage you. We'd love to pray for you. Uh, we'd love to speak life over you. Um, so if that's you, like, I can't encourage you enough to uh, go over there. And, uh, and if it's not over there, like, just find somebody that you can connect with, that you can join with and uh, agree with. Um, have a great week. Uh, remember this evening, 7 o'clock, Grand Point Church Auditorium, worship night, Chambersburg. That's, that's correct. That's correct. Chambersburg. Sorry, I didn't clarify that. And next Sunday, church picnic. Oh, one thing I forgot to say. Make sure you bring your competitive spirit to next Sunday. There will be games. Uh, Kevin's shaking his head there. So, uh, okay. Thank you. Have a great week.